Hi, I'm Kelly from the Drupal Association, where I'm the Director of Development. And I'm Nathan Roach, the Marketing Director at Accelerant. We're your hosts here for the new show. We're calling it Beyond the Build, Stories of Drupal Impact, where we're highlighting incredible Drupal use cases by ambitious site builders and end users. Very exciting. We're happy to have our guests on today. Who's joining Kelly? For this first one, I'm really excited. We got a little backstage preview and I said, oh my gosh, that's so fascinating. Uh, we have Canopy Studios and their client, the Exploratorium. Hi. Hi, folks. Ooh. How are we doing? Hey. hey there. Doing very well. Thanks for joining us on our inaugural episode. Happy One to be here. One of thousands to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lot. Um, well, let me ask, uh, I'll have you all introduce yourselves. Jim, do you mind starting? Um, how long have you been at Canopy? And tell us a little bit about your role there. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Jim Birch. I'm an engineering manager here at Canopy Studios. I've uh, been with the company for about five years and work on the build team, which these days is migrating wonderful existing sites to Drupal 8, 9, and 10 websites. Um, at Canopy, awesome. we try to make the internet better one site at a time, um, and we work with great clients uh, that try to make a positive impact as well. Awesome. Great. Tim, I'll let you go ahead. How long have you been at Canopy? I have been at Canopy for five years as well. I think Jim and I started around the same time. Uh, and so just to introduce myself, so I'm Tim Tufts. I'm Canopy's Director of Project Success. And what that means is I oversee all the builds here at Canopy. Uh, and I work very closely with Jim on many of those. So uh, Jim oversees our Drupal projects, but we also have a number of WordPress projects as well. And uh, I was also the project manager for the uh, the Exploratorium project. Thank you for uh, joining us, Canopy, and George Perry from the Exploratorium. How are you doing today? Why don't you introduce yourself? I am doing wonderful today, Kelly. Thank you. Um, my name is George Perry. I am the manager of the online media team, the online media group. Uh, we are part of the media studio department at the Exploratorium. I've been here for two years. I started during the pandemic, and I have the pleasure of managing one of the oldest websites on the internet. What does that mean? Tell them what, that was the interesting factoid oh I heard. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so we were, exploratorium.edu um, is a museum, and, and we are one of the first 600 websites on the internet. Hence, why we are a museum with the .edu extension, because you can't get that anymore unless you're an educational institution. Um, we have had so many iterations of content, and we have a bounty, a wealth of pages um, from the past and present uh, that we really care about maintaining. Um, yeah, it's a it's a uh, big challenge to manage all of that. Um, I can say that the first webmaster um, is still involved with the Exploratorium, uh, and a lot of the, the people that were there, some of the people that were there at the beginning. Uh, it's very impressive to, you know, be able to traverse the online legacy of the Exploratorium. And all the crust that we've built along the years and somehow kept around, which was a treasure trove of um, opportunity. <laughs> can, can you tell us a little bit, George, about the mission of the Exploratorium? Okay. So how can I say? Um, our, the Exploratorium is a, I always say, a public learning laboratory for exploring the world through science and art and, you know, human perception. Um, and we really, it's actually right in front of me, oddly enough, um, deal with creating inquiry-based experiences to transform the learning experience. Um, how that drives traffic to the web is historically um, learning materials for teachers, for students, 
uh, a fair amount of interactive. Long time ago, we invested heavily in Flash Interactive. Um, now, the, what's we have are um, still some of those around, um, which we kind of bootstrapped with some of the one of the open source programs, Ruffle, that um, is making a Flash interpreter, and a lot of you know JS interactives. Um, we really are all about inquiry, um, all about experiential learning. And um, we love that we can embody that on the floor and in the website and things like science snacks, tinkering, um, a historic one, science of food. Um, yeah, and we have events and programming throughout the year. So it's not just a static once and done website. It's forever changing. Um, people host events here. It's a wonderful place. Completely ever changing. So then, Tim, tell us about how. I mean, you didn't come in from the beginning, from the long time ago. About when did you all start your relationship with the Exploratorium? No, we did not start our relationship in the uh, in the nineties. Uh, so it was a little over two years ago. The uh, the Exploratorium was looking for a partner to help them transition from Drupal seven to uh, to Drupal eight at the time, uh, and the challenges that come along with that. So as George sort of alluded to, there was a lot of cruft that had accrued over the years. Uh, I'm sure we'll probably get into a little more detail as far as like some of the challenges and, and some of what that cruft looked like. But um, yeah, the Exploratorium was looking for a partner to help them create a blueprint and roadmap for transitioning to, uh, to Drupal 8 at the time. And of course, uh, we're, we're now on Drupal 9. So a uh, big, big difference from when we started this project yes. about two and a half years ago. Great. And what before Drupal 7, was the site on Drupal 6 or uh, a previous platform? We were static HTML. So it was created with, um, I mean, what can I say? I'm saying like, in like random tools like front page and just, you know, hand coded. Um, initially the website was obviously hand coded because, you know, it's the beginning of the internet, they didn't even think of IDEs or anything like that. But it was pretty much hand coded um, until then. And um, one of our team's members um, was part of the people that brought it into Drupal. And so they've shared a lot of history with us of it. Um, and, and some of the crop like, Oh my God, this is a test page we created long ago. I'm like, wow, it's still published. Okay. We're going to, you know, sunset this wonderful treasure. Um, but you say that you know, with such bitterness. <laughs> well, no, 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 it's, it, it's endearing bitterness. Um, because yes. like we have a lot of things where it is like, wow, what is this doing here? And, you know, like, practices so it was it was one of those like you know pingable pages where it's like ah oh, your site is up and it's like okay this is the ping test page that nobody ever knew existed so it's a lot of like this wild discovery still you know hidden treasures hidden treasures yeah. exactly so jim then you came on and you've been the working with Exploratorium for two years as well. Or when did you join the project? Yeah, so I, I helped uh, a co-developer, uh, Blanca Esqueda, work on the transition plan at the initial. So we basically looked at the Drupal 7 site and kind of did, did our technical planning uh, from a high level, you know, in a small, you know, bite-sized project, you know, from that you know, uh, Exploratorium decided to work with us further to actually implement the plan. Um, but, you know, we took a look at what they had, you know, from inside of Drupal 7 to the 300 microsites or folders of the site that they had, um, you know, the static HTML sites, and came up with a phase one, phase two, phase three approach. Um, you know, when we kicked off phase one, um, you know, we decided to tackle the events section, the calendar section of the site, because Exploratorium is a wonderful digital platform, but is it actually a even cooler, you know, in-person event platform? Um, you know, so we looked at 41 content types in Drupal 7 and 
figured out that eh, maybe we don't need so many, um, you know, things like exhibits, exhibitions, galleries, you know, things that have very minutia, you know, differences to the Exploratorium team, but to the outside world, yeah, we came up with the term experiences. So we kind of merged all these things into one experience that could be displayed at a calendar, whether that be an exhibit, an ongoing exhibit, or just a one-time event. Um, so yeah, we were able to come up with a migration plan um, that was executed by my incredible coworkers, Ann Bonham and Andy Sippel, and uh, George's amazing team uh, of developers also. So, you know, Canopy and, and Exploratorium worked hand in hand with design and development. Um, coming up with an architecture, you know, did the experiences section, the calendar section first, and then moved up the rest of the migration. Can you tell us about the journey through those three phases? Were there any, you know, really significant challenges or things that sort of stick out for any of you when you're going on that journey? Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of those hiccups or some of those challenges or hills that you had to climb? Hmm. I think if I can start it off, it's, you know, George and his team have a lot of different stakeholders. Um, so, you know, he is, leads the online media group, but he has marketing, he has fundraising, he has, mm. um, you know, the tinkering team, uh, which makes these great uh, tutorials for, for educators. Um, oh, I want to be on that team. Cool. It, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I mean, online yeah, and in person. Um, uh, you know, the Eclipse Project, where they partner with NASA, and, you know, they were one of the first peoples to live stream on the Internet. You know, it's just like the amount of stakeholders that, you know, Exploratorium had um, was, you know, very important to make sure that we satisfied all of them in a time frame where we could. Um, we actually ended up launching the site partially um, using some domain masking where the Eclipse project needed to launch before the full site was launched a couple weeks ago. Um, we actually you know, sent part of the traffic to the Drupal 9 instance and the rest of the traffic to the Drupal 7 instance. Um, so we could you know, make the stakeholder goals in that project a reality while we're still working on the rest of the team too. Mm -hmm. That's pretty yeah. amazing. That sounds and very, that sounds like a good solution. Sorry, George, were you going to say something? <clears throat> oh, yes. Definitely. It was for us too. Like there was just so much unknown and churn through our team. Like when I got here, there were, it was me and two other, two other people and um, somebody who was a contractor and really that and one of those people had was for a while was the only person on the team and they were a designer and we were working through a lot of discovery of the unknown within our content um none of them really knew drupal um like not intimately like they knew how to use drupal but Deep in the guts of it, there was reservation to get in there. I came in and wanted to train people like, okay, we own this. We have to have um, the knowledge of the system, like develop that deep knowledge, not just so we can do it ourselves, but so we can make the decisions of what we can't do ourselves and know when to ask for advice. And um, in the hunt for a partner with that, like, Canopy was definitely the, the best folks that we, we found. Um, we learned a lot from them, and it was a, a definitely a together journey. Um, I think the hands, probably the biggest challenge in summary is just like there was just so much randomness to be found. <laughs> and there were so many ways that with the limited knowledge we had, we – you know, sometimes we got things right. Sometimes we got things wrong. Um, and, you know, with Drupal, there's a lot of ways to do things differently. Um, so having expertise and experts to help us through that was like key. Um, but Drupal Pool proved to be a very, you know, handy tool, um, you know, for, for creating the product. 
And, and let's go into that because Kelly and I are super interested to understand why Drupal. Um, we understand that you were on seven prior, but why why does Drupal work for the Exploratorium? Okay, for us, we had like tens of thousands of web pages, um, and we had to we needed to be able to have multiple editors, so we had to be able to deal with role based, uh, multi tenant different experiences um, as far as, you know, um, things like the Eclipse, as far as the main website, um, other projects as well. Um, Drupal, the, your LAMP stack is a tried and true platform. You know, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, it's tried and true. Um, I used to work at Yahoo when Yahoo was a thing. Um, and they were LAMP stack and it's a very classic architecture. Um, with um, with um, caching is scale, scaled very well. Um, the concerns were with WordPress with that volume of pages and their data model. We thought Drupal would be a lot better. Um, we decided that sticking with Drupal, like primarily as not just you know the data layer, but as the front end. So we were trying to do the um, you know. To try to do the front end in React or in um, Gatsby or anything like that, we found that this would be best for us to stick this route because of um, not just SEO, but editor um, knowledge and visibility into what the end product was. Um, it, and Drupal is infinitely flexible. Um, it's open source. I love open source for a long time. Um, yeah, it generally, I think, was the best choice that we had. And you mentioned multiple stakeholders. Um, uh, how did, did you have to sell Drupal to these stakeholders as well? You mentioned marketing is in the mix. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure. Maybe Canopy had to help you to do that. How, how do you get everybody on the same page before finding a solution, a capable solution partner like Canopy? Right. So we were being already in Drupal. We had to sell them that we did have to sell some folks, but people were saying a lot of folks were like, why don't you just change the WordPress? You know? Um, and then there were the folks like, well, this is a great technology. Why don't you just do it the old way? Like, you know, do it in, or do it in react. And we had some folks like static HTML and is key is, is King. And I was like, well, that's not going to work. Um, so, it was, um, some people it was a hard sell, um, but most part of it was the sell of like what my content will look like, how will I be able to access it, you know, um, and also like what content belongs on a website anymore on this single website, um, because we were all things to everything. We were an archive, we were a portal for selling tickets, we were a knowledge base, we were you know, too many missions. So we had to, um, even with Drupal, we had to take some data and move it elsewhere um, between archive it and between um, a static HTML S3 bucket. Yeah, you know, so had to yeah. make some tough choices and have a lot of stakeholder conversations. But we tried to manage it through also from the top down. So kind of working up my like management ladder and then down the leadership ladder. Um, because create, scoping this by um, just asking everybody what would you want, it was never going to work. Uh, we really need to approach it from this is what you need and go as database as possible. So we leverage tools like Google Tag Manager, um, Google Search Console, um, heat map tracking. Like we use all that to justify what we wanted to do as opposed to the passion battle because the passion mm -hmm. battle was never going to, it was just going to be, it would never work out. Wow, that's amazing. Nice. So you had mentioned that you just a couple weeks ago launched something um, on Drupal 9. Where is the rest? So you're still in the midst of this. This is an ongoing and there's still work to be done. We're all the way on Drupal 9 now. So oh, nice. as of 419, 420, we um, went fully into Drupal 9. And a couple weeks before that, we just had the Eclipse in there. So um, it's 
it's been wonderful, but there, there've been, you know, a couple, couple challenges along the way, but, um, after cut over, but you know, it's mostly little content stuff like, you know, dude, where's my page? So <laughs> we, um, just, you know, dealt with that. And the, the feedback we've got has been very positive. Um, you know, from this is amazing. I never thought this was ha- would happen. Oh my God. I can't believe it. You know, it took a long time to get the project off the ground um, because of the pandemic. And, the, you know, so that was a, a major hurdle as well. But also just because we launched the site doesn't mean we're done. You know, mm-hmm. exactly. as things go in, in Drupal and the internet. So, you know, just today we've talked about scoping a plan to uh, upgrade to Drupal 10. You know, before. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, talked about, you know, during the project, uh, George's team had to launch another site on a standalone Drupal 9 instance um, just because mm-hmm. of scope and priorities there. You know, we talked about rolling that in. So, you know, we don't like to launch, you know, say goodbye. You know, we want to be partners with our clients in the Exploratory and the support them in their web journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think an ongoing relationship is definitely going to, going to benefit us too. Um, and hopefully I can get more of the team involved in the Drupal community. Cause I think that would benefit um, us and, you know, hopefully the community too. And speaking of teams. Uh, so, so Tim, you were managing the project, right? Uh, what's the team size that was currently uh, working with the Exploratorium from Canopy's side? Yeah, so on the Canopy side, we had about four developers, uh, myself, project manager, and then we had a designer that was also working on the project, too. Great. Awesome. Excellent. And and as Drupal 10, you know, this is, a, this is approaching, what are the conversations now about getting ready? Um, I Hopefully, I would imagine they're much easier to be had than pre- the previous project, right? Which is the whole point. Yeah, the, yeah, I mean, the conversations we had today were, let's get it on the roadmap, you know, understand that, you know, George has a lot of uh, probably content commitments he needs to address first, um, mm-hmm. you know, but we have a, you know, we run tests on our active developments. So we already know where deprecated code lives from Drupal 9 to Drupal 10. Um, we know which modules we'll need to update ourselves or with help from the community um you know we'll know what content editors will look for with like the ck editor 4 to ck editor 5 upgrade um so you know we're we're looking to you know put it into our schedule you know this summer you know before we get near the end of life date for drupal 9 and before uh the exploratorium team gets into you know fundraising season and you know no, you know, they're going to be busy, you know, working and supporting those teams. Perfect. So you're definitely keeping your eye on how busy it gets at the Exploratorium. I understand fundraising season. So working with them on mm-hmm. that, yeah, all of those a, deadlines. Yeah, it's a, a big, uh, you know, uh, grouping together of technology and, you know, real world business needs, you know, try to find that place in the schedule for, for all of the things. Awesome. Yes. Yes. All right. Great. Great. I mean, I, I just had a couple more questions, if that's all right. I, I wanted I, I wanted to know about what makes the relationship work really well, because we can tell that you all have like a lot of synergy. The relationship is, is really strong and you have a legacy of delivering value and investing in your platform. What makes all that work? Like, is it just the demonstrated trust from those three phases of the initial launch and now George, you can rely on canopy because you've seen them in action or is it, or is it something else? And this is open to anybody to answer just about how the customer and agency relationship, how it works and how it's working really well. And the why behind that. I go first. George, if you want. Go for it. Go for it. I think what's been really great to see with, with our partnership with the Exploratorium is, is just that it, it's been a partnership. Um, not only has it just been, you know, the canopy team doing the work, it's been the canopy team and the exploratorium team. So Jim mentioned earlier that there were developers on the exploratorium team as well. 
And we've really collaborated and uh, worked really well together, I think, throughout the entire project. George's team might take on a couple tickets just so they could learn more about Drupal. Um, and our team might have given them some some support or some insights to to sort of one up their their Drupal experience or expertise. Um, but then we were having weekly working sessions, uh, meeting to discuss priorities or any sort of challenges or if there are any sort of sticky sticky topics that we needed to uh, to work our way through. So there was a lot of transparency, a lot of collaboration, and I think a lot of trust um, between our two teams throughout the entire project. Looks like the customer agrees, George. Definitely. I definitely agree. And I think like in that, even with um, Canopy, the, their, their willingness to deal with we, when they got on, we were like, oh, we know we're going to discover so many skeletons in this, these closets. Like there are skeletons behind the skeletons behind the skeletons. And um, it was a wonderful phase of discovery and collaboration and partnership. I think definitely the definitely a keyword in being partnership for sure. Um, you know, and that they, we wanted somebody that was going to be there to help us learn and not, you know, and work together and not just throwing requirements over the fence back and forth. Um, I can't, having been in software for some time, like just throwing requirements back and forth over the fence just never works. It just makes for, um, a painful process. And, um, you know, I've also did, uh, did um, technology consulting before. And so I wanted some, somebody that would help us to not just be 100% dependent, but to help us to understand, to help ourselves. We can help each other along the way. And I think that forms the best consulting relationships. From a Drupal point of view, I think George and his team also had a very good understanding or learning of where all the skeletons in Drupal are buried also. Oh my gosh. So, you know, we came up with some very interesting bugs in core and contrib and, you know, it's not just, uh, here's another ticket. This is broken. Fix it. But, you know, let's get to the root of the problem. You know, can we contrib? code back to the community mm -hmm. to help fix this, fix this at its root rather than, you know, just for us today. Um, yeah. So, you know, th that understanding, you know, is because they're a very technical team, even though they didn't all come from the Drupal world, um, you know, they really embraced, you know, understanding of Drupal and, you know, we're trying to do very complex things. And, you know, sometimes all the little bits and pieces, all the little Legos don't fit together. And they're right the way they're supposed to in Drupal. So, mm -hmm. you know, we work to try to make Drupal better in, in addition to, you know, the, the website. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for that. That's amazing. What's what, that's the end of the end game is contributing back and these partnerships make them su successful and successful for the future of everybody using Drupal. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I mean, thanks everybody for joining. I know we're, we're about 28 minutes in. So, um, I, I hope that this was, this was okay. Was it was so our first time Kelly and I, thank right? Thank you so, so much for that. You yes. all really expanded and did more, more for us than Nathan and I could have done the things you said. So thank you so much for all your expanding on everything. That's Absolutely why we want to talk to the experts. <laughs> I know. That was so good. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, teams. It was so nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us on our first episode of Beyond the Build. And if you have a Drupal agency that you want to bring on with one of your amazing clients, please email me at partnerships at association.drupal.org. That's partnerships with an S at association.drupal.org. And thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.